Okay, so this is a tutorial on the Bombay phenotype, which is a case of epistasis. You'll remember that the definition of epistasis is where one gene, or a genotype for one gene, prevents expression of um, the phenotype of another gene. And so, by definition, you're dealing with, if you have epistasis, you have two different genes. Not two alleles of the same gene, but two completely separate genes. In this case, for the Bombay phenotype, we have the locus, the ABO locus, which is on chromosome 9. That's one gene. And there's three alleles, A, B, and O. Let me see if I can get a pencil going here. So at one locus, it's called the ABO locus. That's one gene. And so you can only have two alleles but you, they have to be two of these three possible alleles at that locus. Then the other gene that's involved here is called the H locus, and there's two alleles at the H locus. There's big H or little h possible. So each individual in the pedigree has a genotype, two alleles at the ABO locus, and two alleles at the H locus. And it turns out that the the gene at the ABO locus en encodes an enzyme which creates the carbohydrate attachment of a glycoprotein. So, so the ABO locus encodes an enzyme. It's really hard to write with this, but it encodes the enzyme which creates the carbohydrate portion of the glycoprotein. Carbohydrate. The H locus creates the what's called the H substance, which is basically the protein portion of the carbo of the glycoprotein. So the H locus, H or little h, produces the protein. So when you have a protein plus a carbohydrate, that's a glycoprotein. So the combination of both loci, the gene product of the H locus combined with the gene product of the ABO locus gives you the glycoprotein. A glycoprotein is displayed on the surface of a cell. So if you have a cell like this, there's the protein portion, a transmembrane protein. So this is the cell, oops, sorry, this is the cell membrane here, this is the protein portion, and then you have a carbohydrate attachment. So that's a glycoprotein. And so when you say what blood type do you have, what you're saying is what glycoprotein do you have on your cells? Well, only the big H allele produces the protein. The little h allele is non-functional. That would give you no protein, no H substance. So most people have the big H allele. All right. And most people have, you know, the ABO. So what happens is most people are like big H, big H, so they do make the protein portion. And then they have A, B, or O, and they get a certain carbohydrate, and the combination of that makes their blood type. So that's what we call the antigen is the type. All right? So that's normal. But what if... Here's the big what if. What if somebody had little h, little h as their genotype? Well, the little h allele doesn't produce any of the protein. So even though there's a carbohydrate maybe being produced, if you don't have the protein, then you still get no glycoprotein. All right, so little h, little h gives you no glycoprotein. Okay. With the ABO locus, if you have two O alleles, homozygous for O, which sometimes is written as little i, little i, then you also get 
no glycoprotein. So there's really two ways to be type O. Either have a little h, little h genotype, or an, an OO recessive here. So what's probably happening in this case is that this individual is probably got a big H, little h, in addition to their A. Maybe they have AA or maybe they have AO, but then they also have H, big H, little h. And this individual has big H, little h. So this would be uncommon, but it could happen. And if these two individuals have a baby, isn't it possible for the baby to have little h, little h? This one and this one could end up here in here. So what that does is maybe this is an A and this is a B, so you could ha inherit the A allele and the B allele or something like that, but your A, B, and your little h, little h, well, little h, little h will give you a type O. So the little h, little h, because you're not producing the protein, it blocks expression of the AB, and that's epistasis. So this person would show the phenotype of O because of this little h, little h. But let's say that they mate with somebody who is big H, big H, then all their children would have big H, little h, and they would show their blood type. So what we perceive as being, you know, a blood type A, B, or O, it's actually the con contributed by two completely different genes, and if you have either a little i, little i, or homozygous O, that gives you an O phenotype, but also if you have a little h, little h, that would also give you an O phenotype. So either one. But in this case, you're probably seeing the little h, little h coming up in this individual called the proband, and that's why they show up as phenotype O. So it's all legit and this person can have a child, you know, that is not, you know, for example, that is AB because they can pass on the, in this case, the B and the little h. This parent can pass on the A and the big H, and you can still get this child. So you have an explanation which accounts for this. It's pretty rare, but it has been documented. So that's a human case of epistasis regarding blood types.